What's that car behind me? Depending on time and place, this could be Dodge Caravan, Chrysler Town & Country, Volkswagen Bruton or Lancia Voyager. This is 2015 and we're in continental Europe, so this is Lancia Voyager. After Fiat took over Chrysler, a decision was made to limit the presence of American brands in Europe, focusing on models with the biggest sales potential or filling gaps in the model lineups of other brands owned by Fiat. And so the Voyager became a Lancia. Let's not kid ourselves. The only thing Lancia about this car is the badge on the bonnet. Okay, and under the bonnet of this particular test example is a 2.8 liter diesel from FCA's VM Motori. But in some markets you can also get an American 3.6 liter petrol. And now the best part. The boot has 934 liters. Interestingly enough, it is the third row of seats that accommodates three people. At a press of a button it transforms into a bench from which you can admire sunsets. another button and it folds nicely under the floor and the boot space increases to almost 2400 liters. But there is more. I slide the doors open and you have two seats. Perhaps more observant among you noticed that front seats are slid forward all the way. That's to give me access to the compartments under the floor. One pull of a lever and presto, the seat disappears. The same with the other one and the boot volume increases to a whopping 3,900 liters. It's no surprise all these seats are rather comfortable. There are also two screens to watch films on. You can plug the player here or play a DVD from the player in the front. And there is also three-zone climate control. In the front you sit high, higher than in European minivans, more like in an SUV, and the window sills are so low you can easily put an elbow on them, if you like. The dials are clear and easy to read, also the onboard computer is relatively easy to use, SatNav 2 is easy to use but the graphics look last decade. I love Voyager for its abundant storage. Finally I have a place for everything I carry around and nobody is going to tell me that nothing should be left lying around. If there is no place, obviously nothing can be left lying around, right? Besides electrically operated seats, there are also electrically adjustable pedals. This makes the car more comfortable to drive by people wearing high heel shoes. But I cannot slide the seat backwards anymore, which means taller drivers may find themselves cramped behind the wheel. So, ready to go? Oh, I love the place where they put the gear lever. I feel like I'm about to drive a bus or a truck. The first problem I came across uh, are daytime running lights, or rather lack of them. Uh, when I got into the car first, uh, I put the light switch into auto mode and it turns out there are no daytime running lights because the auto mode is just for day and night. I understand new headlamps may be a bit expensive for Dodge, Chrysler, Fiat, Lancia, whatever that is, and this car has been on the market for a few years, that's maybe before daytime running lights were mandatory. But, uh, you know, in a 40,000 euro car, I would expect someone to just switch a fuse so that in auto mode, lights are always on and the dimmer, the automatic dimmer, works only for the dials and for satnav. Because when I put the lights on, the satnav goes dim. And uh, yeah, for most of the time, I have to drive with the satnav in dimmed mode. There is probably a way to switch it into day mode, but then I have to switch it back into night mode when I'm driving at night, and so on, and so on. You see where this is going. Even with the 163 horsepower 2.8 liter diesel, Lancia Voyager is no speed demon. It doesn't like to accelerate, 
as you can probably hear right now but at speed it will coast for a long time no wonder this car weighs around 2300 kilograms acceleration from 0 to 100 kilometers per hour is 12 seconds if you give a damn the manufacturer promises 8 liters per 100 kilometers in the combined cycle 9.5 is more realistic and that's if you stick to eco driving principles and stick to them to the letter the suspension is comfortable and the car floats it's very nice unless you have motion sickness. There is something pleasantly old school about the Voyager. I think this is how the old American cars handled. But when the roads get rougher, I can hear the car bang and rattle. And don't try to take corners too fast, because the Voyager is no Ford S-Max. The engine is loud and I can hear it at low speeds on motorways, the wind noise cuts in, but it's okay, especially for a car with aerodynamic properties of a house. Visibility is good and the car is easy to maneuver, but this is a big car and you might want to choose a reversing camera, which may be an option on lower spec models or it may not be available at all, so check your local spec versions. It's well worth it. In terms of size, Lancia Voyager is close to long wheelbase Mercedes-Benz V-Class, which with similar spec will probably be 5 to 6 thousand euros more expensive. So the question is whether you want to save 15% and drive a Lancia or pay extra and drive a Merc. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Also, don't forget to subscribe to my channel and share my videos with your friends. New episodes every Friday. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.